everyone, I hope you are keeping safe at home and you have been busy with your home learning. Today, we are going to be writing a non-chronological report. Non-chronological. Non-chronological. Well done. Okay, so by the end of our session today, we will have learnt the key features of a non-chronological report and what a non-chronological report is. We will then include the key features in our own reports that we are going to write about stick insects. And then we will also have used some conjunctions to extend our sentences and we will make sure that we have used capital letters and full stops in the correct places. So before we start, please pause the video and make sure that you have got a pencil, some paper and your thinking caps are on and you are ready to learn. Okay, brilliant. We are going to start our session today with some spellings. So you need to fill in the gaps in each sentence with the missing word. I will read each sentence and then the word that you need to write in the gap twice. So, Sarah had a bath because she fell over in the mud. Because. Sarah had a bath because she fell over in the mud. Number two. Tom likes to climb trees. Climb. Tom likes to climb trees. Number three. Selena has grown a beautiful sunflower plant in her garden. Plant. Selena has grown a beautiful sunflower plant in her garden. Number four. Human beings can move in lots of different ways. Move. Human beings can move in lots of different ways. Number five, there are only 30 days in the month of June. Only. There are only 30 days in the month of June. Number six, can you find the odd one out? Find. Can you find the odd one out? Number seven, I filled the bath with soap and water. Water. I filled the bath with soap and water. And number eight, the cows were sleeping on the grass. Grass. The cows were sleeping on the grass. So just double check that you have got eight words written down and then we will go through the answers. These are our tricky words because we can't sound them out. So number one, Sarah had a bath because she fell over in the mud. Number two, Tom likes to climb trees. Number three, Selena has grown a beautiful sunflower plant in her garden. Number four, human beings can move in lots of different ways. Number five, there are only 30 days in the month of June. Number six, can you find the odd one out? Number seven, I filled the bath with soap and water. And number eight, the cows were sleeping on the grass. So these are tricky words that we can't sound out, so it's important that you learn how to spell them. Some of the words you might learn little jingles to help you. So for because, you might know big elephants can't always use small exits. And that helps you remember how to spell the word. Don't worry if you didn't get them all right. Make sure you correct them now because they might be words that you'll want to use in your non-chronological report later on. So today we are going to be trying really hard to include some subordinating conjunctions in our reports. Subordinating conjunction. Well done. So a conjunction is a word that joins two clauses, two sentences or two ideas together and a subordinating conjunction joins a main clause, so the main part of the sentence, with another clause that wouldn't make sense on its own. So I'm going to show you some examples in a moment. Today, we are going to be focusing on including the subordinating conjunctions because, my turn, when, and if. Well done. So those are our three subordinating conjunctions that we are going to try and include in our non-chronological reports today. So, can you catch the correct conjunction fish to complete the complex sentence below? Here, I have got my main clause, Harry washed the car, 
and I have got a subordinating clause. It was very dirty. I need to choose which conjunction will join the two clauses together. Harry washed the car that it was very dirty. Harry washed the car when it was very dirty. Harry washed the car if it was very dirty. Or Harry washed the car because it was very dirty. Let's see if you chose the correct fish. <laughs> she keeps looking over. You're going to have a thought video you of you looking over here. Um, when you do that, yeah. you might just want to say, like, just, just remind them again, oh, I support another conjunction, maybe it doesn't make sense what you're saying. So if I was just right, it was very dirty. You wouldn't I wouldn't know what it was. So that bit doesn't make sense because that is a subordinated conjunction. It gives extra information. Okay, one thing. Got to go back up. And that one, couldn't it be? It could be when, when or because. because. Yeah. You have to choose the one that makes the most sense. Oh, okay. I know. So, you need to catch the correct conjunction fish to complete the complex sentence. Here we have got our main clause, Harry washed the car, it makes sense on its own. And at the end, we have got the subordinating clause, it was very dirty. Without the main clause, we don't know what was very dirty. So we need to join them together with a subordinating conjunction. So, could it be that Harry washed the car that it was very dirty? Does that make sense? Harry washed the car if it was very dirty. Harry washed the car when it was very dirty. Or Harry washed the car because it was very dirty. Which conjunction makes the most sense in the sentence? Let's have a look to see if you have chosen the correct fish. Well done if you chose because. Harry washed the car because it was very dirty. Let's have a look at another one. Gran said Cheng could go to the park tomorrow. It was not raining. So here is our main clause. And then we have our subordinating clause at the end that we need to join together with a conjunction. Gran said Cheng could go to the park tomorrow that it was not raining. Gran said Cheng could go to the park tomorrow if it was not raining. Gran said Cheng could go to the park tomorrow when it was not raining. Gran said Cheng could go to the park tomorrow because it was not raining. Which conjunction makes the most sense in this sentence? Let's have a look. Gran said Jen could go to the park tomorrow if it was not raining. Well done if you chose if. Our next sentence. Manoj was going to play on his computer. He got home from school. So again, we've got our main clause that makes sense on its own and our subordinating clause that doesn't make sense on its own. It needs to be joined to the main clause to make sense. Manoj was going to play on his computer that he got home from school. Manoj was going to play on his computer if he got home from school. Manoj was going to play on his computer when he got home from school. I think in this sentence, the conjunction when makes the most sense. Well done if you thought the same. Okay, last one. Leah received a trophy. So this is our main clause. Leah received a trophy. And then she won the spelling competition. We are going to join the two clauses together with our conjunction. Leah received a trophy that she won the spelling competition. Does it make sense? Leah received a trophy when she won the spelling competition. It does make sense. Leah received a trophy if she won the spelling competition. Does it make sense? Leah received a trophy because she won the spelling competition. So here we could choose between when or because. Which one do you think makes the most sense? I think it might be because. Well done if you thought the same. When would still work, but in this case, because makes the sentence flow a little bit better. Okay, so today we are focusing on non-chronological reports. Non-chronological. Well done. So a non-chronological report is a non-fiction report which is not written in time order. 
So non-fiction means it is about real life, it is not made up. A non-chronological report is focused on a single topic, just one topic, and includes various facts about this topic. Today, our non-chronological report that we are going to write is going to be about stick insects. But first of all, we are going to have a look at a non-chronological report about hedgehogs together. And we are going to identify the key features of our non-chronological report. OK, so here we have a non-chronological report about hedgehogs. And we know it is all about hedgehogs because the main heading, our first key feature, is hedgehogs. Our next key feature is the opening paragraph or sometimes it might only be an opening sentence. And this gives the reader some information about the topic, but doesn't give them too many facts because the, read, the author wants the reader to read the whole report. So it's just trying to draw the reader in and get them to read on. Our next key feature is a subheading. So a subheading tells the reader what each paragraph is about. So here, this subheading, what do they look like, is telling the reader that this paragraph here is all about what hedgehogs look like. If we read through this paragraph, there are a few key features that we need to bear in mind. So hedgehogs are small spiky mammals. Here we have got an expanded noun phrase. So the author is given the reader lots of description about how a hedgehog looks. They give birth to live young called hoglets. Hoglets is a technical word. It's the technical vocabulary for a baby hedgehog. And so it's really important in a non-chronological report to make sure you are using some of the technical vocabulary. Adult hedgehogs are covered in 25 millimetre long spines along their backs. So here we have got the key fact that they have 25 millimetre long spines along their backs and sides. So it is important that you make sure you have got the correct information to share with your reader in your non-chronological report. Again, we've got another subheading here, what do they eat? And then this whole paragraph tells the reader what hedgehogs like to eat and where they can find it. Our last key feature is the facts, the fun, interesting facts that have been included in the boxes on this non-chronological report. So here we have a did you know fact. Did you know hedgehogs also have a very small tail? And then another fact at the bottom. The author has put these facts in a box to draw the reader's attention to them so that they are really obvious and so that the reader can quickly find them. OK, so to recap our key features of a non-chronological report, the first key feature is our heading. So we have a clear heading that tells the reader what the non-chronological report is about. Then we have an opening sentence or opening paragraph that draws the reader in and makes them want to read more, explains what the non-chronological report is about. Our next key feature is our subheadings and our paragraphs. So each paragraph is has a clear subheading that explains what that section is about. Then we have got technical vocabulary. So in a non-chronological report, it is very important that you have included keywords that link to that topic. For example, in our non-chronological report about hedgehogs, they are mammals and they have spines and they live in specific places in the garden. So it gives you the key vocabulary that is technical to that topic. And finally, there are some interesting facts that have been included. So these are the five key features that we would like to see in your non-chronological report about stick insects. So I am going to help you plan your non-chronological report about stick insects. You need to create a spider diagram just like this with the headings, the subheadings. Oh. The subheadings, introduction, what do they look like? Where do they live? What do they eat? And some interesting facts. Once you have drawn your spider diagram out, make sure you've got space underneath each section for your notes. I am going to talk you through lots of interesting information about stick insects, showing you the stick insects from Badger class. I think you'll be very surprised at how big they have grown. OK, make sure you have your spider diagrams ready. OK, everyone, I hope you have got your spider diagrams ready to start making your notes about stick insects. So here we have got Badger Class's stick insects. And if you look very closely, you can see a few of them are eating their food and two there are on the side of the container. 
If you look very closely, you might even be able to spot a few baby stick insects. I will zoom in a little bit later on for you to have a closer look. So, there are 3,000 species of stick insects in the world. Stick insects are also sometimes known as walking sticks or stick bugs. They are the most popular pet insect in the world, but where are they originally from and what do they like to eat? Let's find out. So in Badger Class's stick insect collection, we have two different species of stick insect. Here is the Sungaya inexpectata, and that is also known as the st sunny stick insect. And I'll be telling you some more information about him in a moment. The second stick insect that we have in our collection is the Corosius morosus, also known as the Indian stick insect. And these are the most common stick insects kept as pets at home or in schools and are the most common stick insects. So what do they look like? Well, stick insects are invertebrates. That means they do not have a backbone. Some stick insects are less than one centimetre long, whereas others can grow up to 30 centimetres long. You can see here from the three that I have got out that our stick insects are longer than one centimetre long, but they are shorter than 30 centimetres. So these amazing invertebrates resemble twigs, as their name suggests. Some are more brown than others, whereas other stick insects might be more green. It depends on the area that they live in, as they use their colour to help them camouflage from predators. There are, however, some spe species which are more brightly coloured and have stripy patterns on them. If you have a look here, our sunny stick insects have a long white stripe down the back. The sunny stick insects vary in colour. The females are usually dark brown, light brown or black, whereas the males tend to be light brown or medium brown. The female sunny stick insects are usually longer. However, both the female and male sunny st stick insects do not have wings. The Indian stick insects are usually a light brown colour with red underneath their legs. If I were to zoom in, you might just be able to see there is some red under his legs. They can also be a lighter greeny colour, but generally they are more brown so that they can camouflage. So our next section is all about where do stick insects live? Well, they are found mainly in the tropics and temperate areas, so in temperate and tropical regions, because they prefer warmer weather. Stick insects thrive in habitats like forests and grasslands, because they mainly feed on leaves, as we will talk about in a moment. And they are mainly nocturnal creatures. This means that they spend most of their day motionless, hidden under plants. So they don't move much during the day so that they don't attract predators. Walking sticks are the favorite food of many animals but perhaps their most effective predators are bats. Most bats hunt by echolocation rather than sight, so they aren't fooled by the stick insect's stick-like appearance. If you look closely here, we have got one of our baby Indian stick insects having a walk around the top of the tank. At the moment, I have got five baby stick insects in our collection and they are growing quite quickly. So what do stick insects eat? Well, they are herbivores. That means that they only eat the leaves of plants, shrubs and trees. Their favourite leaves are from the privet and bramble bushes. And at the moment, our stick insects are eating bramble leaves. It is important that they have fresh bramble leaves every few days so that they have the moisture and goodness in them still. 
Our stick insects also have a water container in their home to keep them hydrated. Some stick insects like to have some water during the evening to keep them well. Okay, so for some fun facts about stick insects. Well, stick insects can feign death to fool their predators. So stick insects are often hunted by birds and other creatures such as bats. And so to fool these predators, stick insects will pretend to be dead. They will lay with their limbs all tucked in so that they look just like a twig and the birds think they are dead. Another interesting fact about stick insects is that they can regenerate limbs. So if one of their legs falls off, they can grow a new leg in its place. It's very important when I hold the stick insects that I'm very careful because their legs stick to you or stick to the leaves that they are eating. So I cannot pull them. I must let them choose to walk off of me or walk onto the leaves so that I don't pull their legs off. And finally, stick insects can act like twigs. So they are named for their effective camouflage among the woody plants where they feed. And their thin stick shaped bodies help them to blend in as they perch on twigs and branches. Some stick insects have different markings on them. However, to disguise them more effectively, they can imitate twigs swaying in the wind by rocking back and forth as they move. Thank you for writing your notes about stick insects and I hope you have enjoyed seeing the different species that Badger Class have collected. So to recap our key information that you should have in your mind map notes, I have just put all of my post-it notes here for you to have a look at. And we are joined by our longest Indian stick insect, who is at least 10 centimetres long. Now that you have got your planning ready for your non-chronological report, your notes ready, you are going to write your own. Make sure you remember to include the key features of a non-chronological report, those five key features that we discussed. I have put them on the slide here for you to remind yourselves. Remember to try and include some conjunctions to extend your sentences and give some more information to the reader. And finally, make sure you have capital letters and full stops in the correct places. Then, once you have finished your non-chronological report, please share it with Miss Smith or with myself, depending on whose class you are in, so that we can read through and find out lots of interesting facts that you have learnt about stick insects. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.